Hi and welcome back to the inside of my head where in this video I'm taking a look at possibly the most powerful creature in Pacific Rim, the Jaeger Kaiju hybrid known as Apex. Please just bear in mind that I'm making this video before the release of season 2, so I'm sure there will be more information that will be revealed therein, which may alter or completely invalidate everything I'm about to say. Make sure you hit like and subscribe for all things mecha, kaiju, sci-fi, just, just please subscribe. So let's go back to the very start, and I guess Apex's story begins with this guy. A guy that starts off as a kaiju groupie, goes on to become the very first person to drift with a kaiju, and eventually becomes the guy that came up with the idea to seal the breach with a bomb. Then, he left the PBDC to get in on the juicy private sector and work for Shao Industries and is given the role of head of research and development in charge of developing and building a drone Jaeger concept. Unbeknownst to everyone, he falls under the control of the precursors and uses the drone Jaegers to create an army of Jaeger Kaiju hybrids. While all this is going on, Herman Gottlieb hatches a plan to find other uses for Kaiju blood, which is found to have many useful properties, including a propellant which he later uses to blast the Jaegers into the air, crudely welded to these huge rockets. Anyway, most of those Jaeger drone Kaiju hybrids are destroyed by Li Wen Shao's feedback loop, but at some point, clones of old kaiju, including Leatherback, Slattens, and Mutavors, were sent through breaches to attack Australia in what was known as the Kaiju Uprising. They were countered by Valor Omega, Horizon Bravo, Zeus Marauder, November Ajax, and more, as well as 23 remote Jaegers. Many of these met their ends and came to rest in the Boneyard. Apex, however, wasn't destroyed, but fell dormant and sank to the bottom of the ocean. And it's here that the magic happens, and the kaiju blood with its bizarre properties seeps into the drone Jaeger, not only reactivating the secondary kaiju brain, but somehow causing it to spread across its body, causing it to change into these awesome Darth Maul colors, giving it these red glowing eyes that look like they belong on the tail end of some badass supercar, and causing spikes to erupt on the surface of its body. Oh yeah, and giving it consciousness and sentience, completely separate from the precursor's hive mind. We have a rogue agent here, people. We see how he's progressed beyond using all the armaments he had as a Jaeger drone, almost not needing any of that anymore, and using his long claw-like fingers to slash and puncture any kaiju that he decides would make a good meal. Apex then goes on to use the Australian seaboard as his own personal hunting ground, where it roams around hunting and killing both humans and kaiju as prey, with its favorite food seeming to be the kaiju dogs that prowl in the area. The big thing that we can draw from this is that it eats now, which I guess means that it has a digestive system and requires nutrients. Unless, of course, this is just some pre-programmed instinct left over from the kaiju brain that it's following and that it's just going through the motions of hunting and isn't actually doing it for sustenance at all. It's eventually drawn to Meridian City where it senses another hybrid, this time a human kaiju hybrid in the basement of the PPDC recruitment center, and it tries to establish a drift with him, but for some reason fails. Now, that it could sense that there was a four-foot kid in a vat underground from God only knows how far away tells us that he has some kind of sixth sense. But whatever you want to call it, he's definitely drawn to him, maybe because he feels a connection to the only other hybrid, or perhaps, as there's obviously something a little bit special about this kid being referred to as the Kaiju Messiah by the sisters, he's radiating something that only Kaiju can pick up on. Back in the Boneyard, it inadvertently saves the kids and Atlas Destroyer from an acid quill, before turning on Atlas Destroyer and attacking it. But Apex is halted by the mysterious boy when Apex recognizes him as the human kaiju hybrid it attempted to drift with before. The two drift again and share their memories, which causes Apex to become less hostile towards them, even offering a severed Jaeger arm from Jaeger Chaos Nemesis as a token of friendship which is handy because weaponless Atlas could use a few more of these to defend itself. So keep them coming, buddy. See if you can find me a lightsaber or something. So what's with this guy? He's very powerful, and I'd really love to see what he could do up against, let's say, an Otachi or a Slatten, or against one of the higher-end Jaegers. Will we see Apex versus Striker Berserker in Season 2? To me, that would be the big showdown. I mean, the dream fight would be Apex versus Obsidian Fury, but you know, given that Obsidian is dead, you know, not gonna happen. Bring him back, bring him back, resurrect him somehow. Come on, bring him, we want Obsidian. Now, the reason I think th this could be one of the most powerful beings we've seen in the Pacific Rim universe is really just down to how easily he wipes the floor with this acid quill right here. He grabs it by the tail and makes an utter mockery of it. And when we go back and look at the fight between Striker Berserker and the Acid Quill, and yeah, 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 I know that Striker Berserker was damaged, and Herc Hansen was solo drifting. This, I know this, this I know. But still, the Acid Quill didn't seem like that big of a pushover. And then when you go back and you look at how one of them murders Zeus Marauder here, 
They're not that weak abs, they're just not. Like in terms of weight, the acid quill flattens Gypsy Berserker right here. But Apex is like, yoink! Interestingly, I read somewhere that as the drone Jaegers are able to open their own breaches, as we see here in Uprising, this guy might be able to do the same. Could he be the reason that multiple breaches have opened up right the way across the Australian continent? I wonder if these guys might also be able to seal breaches, which might come in handy later. Anyway, guys, hopefully not too long now before the release of Season 2. But in the meantime, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Lots of cool things coming your way. Not just Pacific Rim stuff, but Transformers stuff, Godzilla stuff. Like, 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 all sorts of stuff. There's not, there's not really a plan. So for now, let me invite you to get out of my head, and I will see you very soon for the next one. Thank you very much for watching, and cheerio, bye!